What is up guys, this is the Austin Nerd Show coming at you with another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we go back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and cover Raw and Nitro, this time from 1998 because it's a new year so we're moving on to 1998 instead of 97 now and we're going to be starting with January 5th 1998 with Raw number 241 and Nitro number 121 and so as usual we'll start with Raw and move on to Nitro. Um, So there was not a video last week so if you did not catch that there wasn't a video video there wasn't because I recorded it and everything and I had issues with uh, the recording thing for some reason it didn't like get changed or something so there I lost the whole recording and then before that I had issues with the microphone so I had to buy a whole new microphone so that delayed it too so it was just kind of issues on top of issues going on delaying the podcast so it just never got put up last week so we're gonna just uh, skip last week and move on to this week and if there's stuff that happens the week before I'll reference or let you know what's going on so whatever there's not too many things I don't think that uh Uh, like have an effect on this week but if there's anything like I said I'll let you know what it is um so as I said we're starting with with raw 241 and this took place in New Haven Connecticut and this episode drew a 3.35 rating so still rising up in ratings here um so the show kicks off with Stone Cold outside of the or at least I assume he's outside of the arena it's he's outside in the dark and he's talking about how everyone's gonna come in for him at the Royal Rumble but he's gonna beat all of their asses and he's gonna strike first to not or showing tonight that he's gonna strike first so with that we have we get to see him you know showing his strike first I don't know how else to phrase that so what he's gonna do to strike first on people so that takes effect through stuff throughout the night and then the show opens and we go to our first match or kick off with our first match which is Farouk taking on Ken Shamrock so this match was made last week's episode so Kama took on Shamrock and of course Shamrock won and everything and afterwards The Rock came out and said that next week you get to face Farouk and of course that made Farouk mad and stuff the whole time saying you know why is The Rock putting me in a match or whatever and so um, that's how this match got set up so in the match uh, Farouk, uh, Farouk ends up attacking Shamrock as soon as Shamrock enters the ring and then or very early on the match match Farouk does I can't remember if he does like a power bomb or something but Shamrock just starts selling that he has a rib injury and stuff and eventually throughout the match the rock ends up coming out and he starts like having a meeting with Kama Dilo on the outside so he's obviously talking where no one else can hear him but he's talking to those two and um, eventually he ends up getting up on the apron and is distracting the referee and then, um, so in the actual match, uh, Sh- uh, Fruit goes to, like, slingshot uh, Ken Shamrock into one of the corners. And when he does that, so Kama holds up a chair in that corner so Fruit can throw Shamrock into it. Um, but when Farouk goes to do it, Shamrock ends up countering it and Shamrock throws him, throws Farouk into the corner and Kama had put up the chair and so Farouk gets hit with the chair and everything. And so from there, Shamrock puts on the ankle lock on Farouk to get the win. And then after that, like after the match and stuff, Farouk's up and he starts starts yelling at Kama on the outside. And for, uh, the, the Rock, I'm going to get all their names confused. The Rock is in, up in the ring and he's just like facing off with uh, Ken Shamrock, you know, like, and Shamrock's won the fight now and everything everything because obviously they're having a match coming up and uh as they're doing that stone cold comes running into the ring and he stuns uh ken shamrock and then stuns the rock because the rock was uh over talking to the nation and stuff so wasn't paying attention and he turns around and then he gets a stunner himself and stone cold goes running out so there's what pretty much what we get for the night of Stone Cold of him just coming in and stunning people all the time and so that's the end of our first match and then we move on to our next segment which is uh, Jim Cornette coming out for a ring announcement so last week he did another like uh like talking segment or whatever where he just complains about stuff but it was a state of the, um, the wrestling industry and so he just talked about how there's no good wrestling anymore and there's all sorts of crappy or crazy entertainment stuff going on so all the good wrestlers can't wrestle because of all the entertainment stuff and so he wants to bring wrestling back to wrestling and what or i know it's confusing but that's you know what he says and stuff and so this week we have jim Cornette coming out and he brings out so i don't know if i got these in the right order or whatever but it's howard brody and dennis corluzo which are the president and vice president of the nwa and uh jim Cornette introduces them and then announces that they're going to be having a match tonight to crown a new NWA champion suit. So, so Cornette's working with NWA, which of course used to run what was WCW before WCW split off and then all the sorts of other companies around the country and stuff. 
And so this is just what remains of the NWA. And so for the match, which uh, happens next, it's going to be Barry Windham, which I think was an NWA champion. Um, I'm not exactly sure on that. Taking on uh, Jeff Jarrett, which of course has the Jarretts have uh, big roots in the in the NWA and stuff. And so um, as the match starts, Jim Cornette gets on commentary and he's uh, just talking about how the NWA championship can be traced all the way back to all these people. And so he keeps going back and back all the way back to uh, Abraham Lincoln, who we mentioned was a um, wrestling champion in Illinois in the 19 or 1840s. And stuff, so they're kind of claiming history all the way back to Abraham Lincoln, which is kind of cool. But in the match, Barry Windham ends up hitting a flying clothesline and starts to go for a pin on Jarrett, but Jarrett ends up getting his leg up on the rope, and it's like a very, you know, instinctive thing. Like he's just laying there, not moving, and his leg just moves up onto the rope and stuff. And as soon um, soon after that happens, I believe that it was the Dennis Corluzo ends up coming over to the ringside, and he's talking with the ref, so he's got the ref, you know talking to him distract kind of thing and he commentary i don't know if it's Cornette or jim ross mentions that that corluzo is explaining the nwa rules to the referee and stuff because he probably doesn't um know what the nwa rules are and stuff and as he's doing that jim Cornette jumps up on the ring and hits barry windham in the back with a racket as he was trying to superplex jeff Jarrett off the top rope and so the they still hit the superplex but and like when they hit the mat and you know go down Jarrett's a- able to get up sooner or whatever because of the racket shot and so Jarrett puts his arm over Barry and the ref counts so we Jeff Jarrett is the new NWA champion so he's just um, pretty new back into the WWF and now he's the NWA champion and soon after the match ends as Jarrett celebrates Stone Cold comes running in and he hits a stunner on Jeff Jarrett as he was celebrating stuff so Stone Cold once again is showing up to ruin all the fun. Then next up, we have Michael Cole, who talks to Ken Shamrock, who's backstage stuff. And Shamrock just mentioned that he wants um, to be in the Royal Rumble, fi- in like the finals of the Royal Rumble, to be, and he wants it to be him and Stone Cold, so that we can see who the better man is and stuff. So sh- I assume that's you know kind of like Shamrock throwing his name into the Royal Rumble. Then next up, we get Sniper and Recon of the Truth Commission coming out with the Jackal, taking on Skull and Eight Ball of the DOA. And Sunny introduces their match, and she's in, like, a schoolgirl outfit and stuff, so she's kind of flying that around. And last week, uh, her and Sable, she showed off, Sable didn't, but they had a swimsuit edition of the Raw magazine, and so it showed, she came out and showed her picture off of her and her bikini and stuff, and so I guess it kind of goes along with that, just trying to look sexy and everything. But in the match, nothing exciting happens, and it's pretty much your just typical t- uh, tag team match that you get. But the DOA ends up, again, I can't tell Skull and 8-Ball apart, so I don't know which one it was. But one of them ends up getting the win with a DDT on, obviously, one of the Truth Commission, but I couldn't pay attention or again rick i don't know the difference enough to tell which one is which of the truth commission guys and after that kurgan ends up coming out to the ring and the truth commission just beat up and destroy the doa and kurgan puts the claw on one of the truth commission guys and is holding it until once again the jackal comes in and slaps him in the face and he breaks the hold the next up we have DX coming out to the ring and Triple H when they come out is wheeled out to the ring and once they get to the ring he gets up in the ring on crutches and again we saw that last week he announced or mentioned that he had dislocated his uh, patella or kneecap and so he wasn't able to wrestle match and stuff and he's on crutches and the wheelchair and everything and he mentions that Triple H challenges Owen to come to, or Triple H on the mic to challenge his own heart to come to the ring. Uh, especially after events last week where Owen faced Shawn Michaels because Triple H was supposed to have the match but because of his injury he wasn't able to be in the match so Slaughter put uh, Shawn Michaels in instead and Owen ended up losing because Triple H interfered by hitting him in the head with a crutch last week and stuff and so he's challenged Owen to come out and Owen ends up coming up on the Titantron and saying that he's not gonna come out and that he wants Triple H's leg to heal completely so that he can beat him and break his other leg and stuff and it's so he's just you know being like i'm not dumb to come out there with you know the dx and stuff in the ring and so that just kind of ends off their segment we then move into our number two where we have Savio Vega taking on Owen Hart. And so in this match, Owen Hart just being very aggressive, of course, trying to take out his anger from DX. And with that note, DX ends up coming out onto the stage and that causes like a little distraction for Owen, allowing Savio Vega to get take control in the match. 
And then eventually, uh, Miguel from the Bariquas, because the Bariquas out there, ends up tripping Owen Hart, and Savio ends up knocking him onto the outside, where the uh, Bariquas come up, and they just start beating up Owen as Savio's distracting the referee. But eventually, Owen gets the sharpshooter put on Savio, and Jesus from the Bariquas gets up on the apron, causing Owen Hart to, like, release the sharpshooter and go after him. But eventually, Owen is able to get the um, win by a roll-up on Savio Vega. And after winning the match, Owen Hart, you know, knows that DX is up at the upper ramp. So he gets out of the ring and starts to go up the ramp towards DX. But the Bariquas come up from behind and attack him. So it stops him from, you know, getting a hold of DX and stuff. And the Bariquas, once they, like, get him beat up and stuff, they grab a hold of him and carry him up the ramp to Triple H. Where he uh, slaps him, slaps Owen in the face and stuff many different times. And then Sean gives a stack of money or whatever to the Bariquas. So showing that they paid the Bariquas to beat up Owen Hart and stuff. Then next up, we have Paul Bear coming out to the ring, and it's mentioned, like commentaries mentioned throughout the night and stuff, that he'd be doing a thing saying that Kane left him and stuff, so he comes out and he's looking in bad shape and all, like, disheveled or something, so his, like, hair's not done like it's been, and he's just looking at his, like, ties all messed up, his shirt's all dirty and everything, so he's just looking like he's in really bad shape. But he mentions, or he brings up Undertaker and stuff, and he says he's hoping that Sean beats and destroys Undertaker at the Royal Rumble, and then he also then moves on to Kane, saying that uh, Kane has left him and that he he can't find him anywhere because Undertaker has poisoned Kane's mind and has caused him to leave Paul Bear. And then he ends up begging just for Kane to come back home to Paul and stuff. And then uh, so that kind of ends off that segment. So Kane somewhere I don't know what happened to him or I don't remember anything really going on with this. But um, so apparently Kane left for a little bit. Then next up we have uh, like chaos or something in the backstage where they have to um, come terrorists to throw it to the backstage saying something's going on and we have cameraman and stuff and there's chaos or whatever and stone cold comes walking out of the, of the locker room and he says some stuff i don't remember what it is but uh he ends up walking away and then the cameraman goes into the locker room and the headbangers that are there and they're standing over mark henry who's been laid out in the locker room so you obviously assume stone cold attacked him and stuff and laid out mark henry so again stone cold's tearing out through the superstars and stuff then next up we have Mark Merrow coming out with Sable and he's taking on Tom Brandy and continuing on with their whole feud thing involving Sable which they did some more stuff last week um, but nothing really major of note except for Merrow beat up Tom and stuff. Um, but in the match uh, at one point Sable, uh, Merrow's hiding behind Sable and he ends up shoving her into Tom Brandy to be able to attack Brandy and stuff with that distraction. Um, at one point the crowd starts chanting Sable a lot and that of course makes Mark Merrow mad and he starts holding his hands over his ears and stuff and looking around and everything just so the whole thing then at one point Mero ends up falling outside of the ring onto Sable so kind of like knocks Sable out and so Tom Brandy comes out and starts trying to help Sable up and Mero ends up jumping out onto him and then Sable starts like selling an ankle injury from the whole thing but eventually Mark Mero is able to hit the TKO and starts to go for another one instead of hitting the pin but Stone Cold comes in as he's got Brandy up on his soldiers and comes in and hits a stunner on Mark Mero and then as he's like leaving the ring and stuff he just kind of stares at Sable and they're just kind of like staring at each other like they give each other like weird looks and stuff and then he just goes walking up the ramp and everything and she just keeps like staring back at him uh, as he's walking up the ramp. Then next up we have a match of Flash Funk taking on Goldust coming out with Luna and as Goldust comes out he's dressed as a rapper and he has it's supposed to be like an old like gangster rapper I don't know how to describe it but he has an afro a chain like a I don't know what you call it I want to say like a uh like a sweatsuit type thing I don't know like a silk sweatsuit I don't know how to describe it but he's got blackface so that's you know not a good thing to be doing at all but Goldust has his face all painted black and this is the first time the WWF did blackface in this year or this is the first time they did it this year and they'll do it again but then the match Flash is just dominating early and Goldust gets tired of it so he starts to head up the ramp but he eventually you know turns around and comes back but Goldust eventually gets in some offense but Flash got control back once again until Flash starts to go for the 450 splash but Luna gets up on the ring and pushes him off and so Flash gets the win by disqualification because Luna got involved and then Goldust picks him up and hits a curtain call on him until Vader comes running in and attacks him from behind and Goldust ends up getting free of Vader and goes running out up the ramp. Then next up we got a little video package on Steve Blackman just showing his history so far in the WWF and probably about his you know being involved in the Royal Rumble and stuff like that coming up. 
The next up, we move on to the New Age Outlaws taking on the Headbangers, and overall this match was pretty boring. Out, it must be the Headbangers, because it seems like every match the Headbangers are in the match is just so boring. Um, but at one point, the Godwins end up coming out and standing on the stage, um, but back in the ring, the Headbangers end up messing up what they call a stage dive, or commentary calls a stage dive, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's like a double team move. And with that, it allows Billy Gunn to get the roll up on Mosh for the win. And then soon after that, Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie come running out to the ring and they chase the New Age Outlaws off. And so that's another thing that happened last week. We got the introduction of Chainsaw Charlie by cutting himself out of a box with a chainsaw. And so he just, it's just Terry Funk. He's got pantyhose on his head and he carries around a chainsaw. And so I believe it doesn't have a blade on anything, so it won't like hurt anybody or anything. But he just kind of threatens people off with a chainsaw and everything. Then next up we get a thing for um, like information or big news coming up for WrestleMania and stuff. And we got um, JR mentioned it last week that there were the WWF was in negotiations to get Mike Tyson to be involved at WrestleMania and stuff, and that they would their uh, Vince and stuff was working on negotiations with Don King, which of course is in, like at this point con in control or head of the um, boxing world stuff. I don't know um, his exact title and stuff. And so this time we have a message from Don King where he um, says, keeps saying WrestleMania and Mike Tyson coming together. Just keep saying WrestleMania and Mike Tyson. Those are like the only two things he says of like mentioning things, whatever. So he's mentioning that. He says, but he says the deal's not final yet, but everything's very close. And so he's just saying that, you know, Mike Tyson will pretty much be involved as long as everything goes well. And then coming out of that, we then get a little like video or picture type thing showing that WrestleMania 14 is only 12 weeks away. So we have 12 weeks till WrestleMania. And then we go into a video on Shawn Michaels and Undertaker and their match from Hell in a Cell shows just like showing. Um, they showed a lot of like clips. It was pretty much just showing a bunch of like the high spots or big parts or stuff from the match. But it was just to show the violence and the beating that they each gave each other and what you can kind of sort of expect for the Royal Rumble. And then our very last segment of the night, we have Shawn Michaels coming out to the ring, and he comes out or comes up and calls out the Undertaker, and he's uh, mentioning that um, he has beat the Undertaker before, and at the Royal Rumble he will prove that the Undertaker is a loser, and so just talking crap about the Undertaker. And so once again, the Undertaker, which the same thing happened last week, I believe it was, but in the different, but um, the you know Undertaker stuff starts going, so lights go down, music starts playing, and the like what they're called druids or. Whatever, it's just people in like cloaks and stuff roll a casket out to the ring and last week um they did it and Shawn michaels ended up popping out because triple h was announcing when he announced his leg injury that sean wouldn't be here tonight for a reason or whatever but they rolled the casket out and Shawn michaels popped out of it and stuff and the casket had like riding and dx spray paint all over and stuff and so the same thing happens this week and so the druids roll out the casket and it's the same one and stuff and sean's making comments like okay guys you did this this happened last week and so Sean just believes it's a joke by Triple H in China. It believes that both of them are in there. And uh, so, like I said, just tell him, come out. You did. We did this last week and stuff. And so Triple H and China end up coming out onto the stage. And they're just up there, like, waving at Sean, trying to get his attention and stuff. And, like, being like, you know, we're up here. We're not there. And stuff. And by that time, the lid opens and Undertaker's inside. And Sean's, like, standing over by because he was getting ready to open it. So, you know, open it to see Triple H and China and stuff. But so he re gets up, grabs Sean, and then pulls him down into the casket. And they go to a camera and commentary mentions that it's a camera inside the casket. But all you can see is pitch black um, and, like, movement or whatever and stuff. But it's supposed to be, like I said, a camera inside the casket showing them fighting. But so that's how the show ends. So I thought Raw was pretty fun and interesting. I thought it was better than last week's, but of course we didn't get to go over last week's very much. But I thought overall it was a much better show and more entertaining and a good way to start off the new year. So now we'll move on to Nitro, and this is again from January 5th, 1998, and this is Nitro 121, and this Nitro took place in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia, which I thought was the, um, like, super big dome, but maybe I'm mistaking it for something else, but it was still, like, they, I think they mentioned they had, like, 30,000 people, so that's kind of a big house for Nitro, but I don't know if that's all real or true and stuff, that's just what I think they said on commentary. But this uh, Nitro got a 4.3 rating, so we're up in the fours again. Um, so as we'll start to see here within a couple or within a few weeks, I don't know when exactly, but their um, rating will start to go down as Raw starts to increase and stuff. 
But the show kicks off, or before the like show opening happens, we have end up footage of the NWO arriving to the arena, and they get out of there's two separate limos, and so they get out, and um, that causes commentary, which is talking over the whole thing. Um, they're like questioning if there's tension in the NWO since the members got out at two different limos. I just thought it was because you know there's so many guys, but um, they're questioning, you know, is there tension, and so guys aren't happy with each other, so they're riding in two separate limos and everything. But so that's just the like question posed by commentary and then we go into the actual show opening and then in the actual show they show the footage from last week so again the only thing really major that happened from last week was that there was a rematch of the uh, main event or, event or title match whatever from Starcade. so it was uh sting taking on hulk hogan once again and so um i believe from what i read and stuff they were trying to do like the redo of what happened at Starcade that wasn't like pulled off very well and so they were just kind of like trying to redo it and stuff and so um last week was mostly just fallout and recap of like Starcade or what happened there um but this like i said was only the really big thing that happened and so we have the footage where at the very end of the match sting, it showed sting hitting a singer splash on hogan and then threw him into the other corner and went to hit him again but for some reason the referee Randy Anderson got in between them and so Sting hit the stinger splash on the ref and the ref was knocked out and stuff and that's where the show ended and uh, went to black or whatever but um, they mentioned that footage of after the show was um, captured but because due to an injunction of something or whatever that was filed the footage is being prevented from being shown so they won't be able to show it tonight. And so we kick off with Mean Gene interviewing J.J. Dillon. And so they come out and J.J. mentions that last week, yeah, at the, you know, after the show ended and the stuff that went on, there was a near riot. So I don't know what happened, but it tells how you can find out, though. But it says there was a near riot in the ring involving both NWO and WCW guys and that the footage is being currently being held by like a judge or somewhere whatever but the footage will be released and be available to the public within 24 hours and so once that happens the footage will be shown and that this week on Thursday night will be the premiere of Thunder on TBS so instead of TNT it's on TBS their sister station and it's WCW Thunder which um, unfortunately is not on the network because but I do plan hopefully if they get it on the network by that time that once Smackdown starts I'll do um, both of those as well doing Thunder and Smackdown episodes together but like I said Thunder is not on the network or anything but I'm sure I could watch it somewhere else but since there's not Smackdown there to go with it um, I won't do them yet but they're saying so for the premiere that's one thing we have is that they will be showing the video and so people can see what happened because there was I guess controversy between what happened in the match or whatever that did Sting win or did Hogan win and so that's brought up a little bit later and stuff um, but they're saying that the footage will be also be shown of the ending of Starcade or of the Starcade match to show if Nate Patrick did do a fast count and all that sort of stuff. So they're saying all this like exclusive footage that of course with it being on uh, pay-per-view they can't really show or something like that. But they're getting special permission to show parts of it um, on Thunder so that's kind of help like draw people to Thunder to see stuff that happened. Then from there, we get ready to go into our first match. But before we do, um, Chris Jericho ends up coming out to the ring. And he, as he comes out, he's carrying a folding chair and a jacket. And so he wants to apologize for last week. So last week, he was in a match. I cannot remember who it, who he had a match with. But um, he ended up losing the match. And afterwards, he got mad. And he went out and pushed uh, Dave Pinzer out of the chair. And Dave Pinzer's the ring announcer, if you didn't know. But he pushed him out of the chair and picked up his chair and started like smacking it against the ring post and everything. And so he comes in the ring and he's just apologizing for his actions last week. He's like, you know, I'm a mentor. You guys look up to me and I shouldn't be acting the way I did and all this sort of stuff. So it's just kind of being funny. Um, but then he has Dave Penzer in the ring there and he said, apologized to him and he gives him a new chair to sit in and a new suit jacket. So if he messed up his one from last week and stuff. And so he gives that to him. And then from there, we move on to the match of DDP taking on Chris Jericho. Um, so in the match, at one point, DD, uh, Jericho ends up pulling DDP's hair and, like, pulls him down to the ring or, like, grabs it and, like, slings him down to the ring. 
and stuff. And of course, the ref is like, you know, yeah, I'm not the bull here. And Jericho starts apologizing, and he's like, acting like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, like he lost his temper again, and he's trying to gain control and stuff. But at one point, Jericho goes to kick DDP, and DDP catches Jericho's foot, and he takes it and spins him around. And when he does, um, DDP comes around and hits him with the diamond cutter to get the win. And of course, afterwards, Jericho just starts freaking out again and starts throwing a tantrum and like pushes over the steps and everything. So again, he's not really controlling himself. Then we move on to Mean Gene interviewing. So we have once again another week of Mean Gene being on a lot. But he interviews a guy, I believe his name is Nick Lambros. And I believe they said he's the WCW, like WCW vice president. I'm not sure if that's exactly what he is or not. But that's just what I could try and catch or whatever. But he comes out uh, mentioning that all that within response to what happened last week with the knee right stuff, whatever, that all WCW contracted guys will be uh, facing fines and suspicion suspensions if they break any WCW policies and that this was all a response from like Turner and all the like upper high upper people controlling WCW that wanted to make this or like hand down this authority or whatever for the events of last week. Then next up we have a match of Goldberg taking on Steve. Ray. So I was kind of surprised in this match. So the past couple weeks, Goldberg's just doing like the squash match stuff. Like he's been then started to do that and stuff. But this week, uh, Stevie Ray actually got a lot of offensive and it wasn't just a squash match and Goldberg was doing actually other moves than just, you know, punching, kicking and then his normal finishing stuff. But as usual, Goldberg eventually hits the spear and then picks Stevie Ray up and hits the jackhammer on him to get the win. We then go into our first Nitro Girls segment. And then that leads into the next match. And it's kind of a weird match that I didn't expect. But it's John Nord, which used to be the Berserker in the WWF. But he doesn't look anything like it except for he's still wearing the um, fuzzy boots or like furry boots. But they're all white and he's just wearing all white. So he's got like black uh, like trunks on and a wh or white, all white is what I'm trying to say. He has the um, furry boots that are all white. He has white trunks on and a white t-shirt that had something on it. But said something like, if you don't like me um or something like it. it was just some weird shirt but he's taking on the barbarian coming out with jimmy hart but i just thought it was a weird match because one john nord's in there oh and he doesn't have like long hair and stuff anymore short hair and it's like frosted tips and stuff so he does, looks really weird but um it's just kind of weird but they mentioned that this is his first appearance then we have another um old wwf guy or whatever i don't know exactly how they word it but guy premiering tonight too but I just think it's weird because I always can call John Nord or the Berserker. I get his name confused and call him the Barbarian because he looks like a Viking, which I think Vikings look like Barbarians. And so I always, I, you know, I'll accidentally call John Nord the Barbarian and then he's facing the Barbarian. So it's just all kind of fun and confusing for me. But in the match, uh, both just are trying to knock each other down because they're both big, two big guys, obviously. But John Nord's eventually able to shoulder tackle Barbarian, sending him over to the, the top rope. And then on the outside, Nord chases Jimmy Hart around the ring up towards the aisle. And then they start fighting there. And then both men just start slinging each other into the railing on each side of the aisle. So one will throw one in the one side. Then the other person will grab that other and then throw them in. So they just keep like reversing, throwing each other into the sides. But in, back inside the ring, the Barbarian ends up hitting a pump handle suplex on Nord. But eventually Nord puts on the camel clutch and he does it weird so he like puts on the camel clutch or it's kind of like uh rusev's i forget what they call it but his finishing move but as he's putting it on he just fell completely backwards instead of like in a crouching position and so they're like oh he's really putting it in now or whatever but john nord gets the win with the camel clutch the next up we have mean gene out again interviewing eric bischoff and eric bischoff comes out and first off he claims you know to like commentary and stuff he said there's no problem in the nwo so you just need to stop talking about that right now and then uh as he's talking the crowd just starts chanting at him and they're not letting him talk and stuff so he starts to threaten to leave and starts to walk out but turns around and comes back in and stuff and he just mentioned that jj dylan is lying because hogan beat sting last week and that's why they don't want the footage there is no judge or anything like that that they just don't want you guys to see the footage of hogan actually winning so that's why it's being held and stuff and then he brings up that he got screwed out of nitro because he actually beat zabisco and commentary mentions um that Eric, I guess, kind of got the win, but he used like a loaded boot or something, so he had like something in the sole of his foot that made his foot extra heavy. So when he kicked Larry Zabisco and knocked him out and stuff, um, but the ref noticed, or I think Bret Hart was the ref or something, and uh, reversed the decision. But it's also mentioned that that footage will be shown on Thunder also on Thursday night. 
And then from there, we went into a match of Psychosis taking on Juventud Guerrera. And so this match was just fun and a great high-flying match. Um, at one point, Psychosis ends up drop-kicking Juventud out of the midair as Juvie was, you know, jumping off the top rope. So that was kind of cool. But Juvie ends up getting the win with a 450 splash on Psychosis. The next up, I don't know exactly, I don't know directly exactly why they played it, but it's um, a video from April, back in April of 97, and it was a segment or whatever that happened in the ring of Hogan and Nash, um, that they were having issues or something, so it was like Hogan talking to Nash or whatever in the ring and stuff about the issues and stuff, so it was just playing that video, kind of playing up the whole issues in the NWO. And then we move on to hour number two, and it kicks off with the Nitro Girls and a Nitro Party ad. And then we get Mean Gene coming out for to like do a little talk or whatever with Booker T. And Booker T mentions that, um, which he did, I've, that's another part. Uh, Booker T won the TV title, I think it was, last week is the title that he won. Um, but he beat Disco Inferno for that last week. And so he mentions that he won that title last week for his son's birthday, or his son's birthday. And so he won that for his son as a birthday present. And that tonight he's going to turn up the heat or whatever. I don't know. Just part of his Harlem Heat type stuff. And so then next up we get the match of Booker T taking on Prince IK to the, in a title defense. And nothing big or major happens throughout the match. But Booker T ends up getting a win with the Harlem Hangover for the win. And so that's his move that you beat Disco with and stuff. So it's like a front flip off the top rope into a leg drop. So he just does one full rotation and hits the leg drop. Then next up we get a match of Buff Bagwell, Scott Norton, and Conan coming out with Vincent taking on the Steiners with Ted DiBiase and Ray Trailer. Um, so in the match at one point, Scott Steiner ends up yelling out F you, but obviously the real word at Buff Bagwell who's standing up on the apron because they kind of Buff like kind of pushed him or something. Um, and then at one point, Rick Steiner and Buff Bagwell are wrestling in the ring and Rick takes Buff down and then starts doing the poses in front of Buff and stuff, like his little pose and everything. But the NWO, as you'd expect, is cheating anytime they can in the match, every time the ref's distracted or whatever, or turned around, the NWO is cheating and stuff. But at one point, Scott Steiner ends up hitting the double arm power bomb on Conan and then uh, he starts picking him up onto his shoulders to set up for the Steiner Bulldog and then it cuts outside real quick and Ted DiBiase is beating up on Vincent and stuff. And of course, commentary mentions their past history. The other thing goes back into the ring, and uh, Rick Steiner is climbing up to the top rope, getting ready to jump off. But Scott Steiner just starts or just tosses uh, Conan off his shoulders, so just like pushes him backwards, and Conan falls back on his back. And then Scott uh, ends up picking him up and hitting what they call the Steiner, Steiner screwdriver on Conan, and then pins him. And uh, Rick ended up getting knocked off eventually by Buff or something. But I think so. That's kind of starting to plant the seeds, whatever of problems between Scott and Rick Steiner leading to Scott's eventual leaving of the team and joining NWO. Then next up we have Nitro Girls dancing and they're out in the crowd and they just have two like young boys or kids standing next to them and that are and they're both dancing and stuff. I don't know why they were doing that but they were doing that. Then we go to a Nitro Party video of a winner and stuff. They didn't say the name or where it was or anything, but it thing was just a huge party outside somewhere, I assume on like a college campus or something. But they had Nitro playing on a big projector outside and everything. And there was just a whole bunch of people there. Then next up, we have the match of Brad Armstrong taking on Rick Martel. So this was Rick Martel's first appearance in WCW or first time here on Nitro and stuff. And so that was the other big person. They talked about him having the titles and stuff in WWF and everything. But uh, nothing really major happens in the match. But Martel ends up getting the win with what they call a, a Quebec Crab, which is just pretty much the Walls of Jericho. So a double leg crab or whatever they call it. Then we go to another Nitro Girls dance segment. Which leads into Chris Benoit and Steve Mongo McMichael taking on Saturn and Scotty Riggs. So throughout the match, Scotty Riggs just keeps getting involved in stuff when he's not the legal man. So he'll just come in the ring and attack whichever of the two guys is in and stuff and just interfere. Um, Lodi's shown on the outside. or He comes over the railing. because So Riggs and Saturn come out through the entrance ramp, but the rest of... Um, the flock is sitting outside in the uh, crowd like they normally do. But when they come out, they tell Lodi to come over. And so he jumps over the railing. And he's just standing outside with a sign saying Lodi rules and stuff. But the flock ends up dominating most of the match because they're pretty much keeping Benwall out of the match and just focusing on Steve McMichael. But Benwall eventually gets in and he gets the cross face put on Saturn. But the flock comes in and interferes and everything. And Billy Kidman gets up on the turnbuckle causing a distraction to the ref referee. And Raven comes in and pulls Benwall off of Saturn and hits him with a DDT. And Saturn rolls over and pins Benwall and gets the win for the flock. 
Then next up, we have Mean Gene bringing out Ric Flair for an interview, and this is a whole long segment thing. Um, so, uh, Ric Flair saying that WCW proved that it could stand on its own without the NWO the past couple of weeks. Then he moves over and congratulates Sting once again for winning the title, and he did the same sort of thing last week and stuff. And he brought up a whole thing last week about Brett, you know, calling himself the best there is, was, and ever will be. And then Ric Flair so takes offense to that and he bring like mentioned this is all last week mentioned a newspaper article called stuff of Dave Melter mentioning that Ric Flair you know is the best wrestler in all of probably wrestling history and stuff and he's like and that's even from Dave Melter's friends with Bret Hart and everything so he just brought that up so he's continuing on with his issues with Bret Hart. And he brings up that how can Brett call himself the best when Ric Flair is around? And so Bret Hart ends up coming out to respond to Ric Flair and stuff. And Flair mentions that he wants uh, Brett to uh, say his saying with him standing there in the ring. And so Brett says, you know, I'm the best there is, the best there was, the best there will be. Or Flair mentions that, you know, Brett, you may be a big deal in Canada, but we're in Georgia. And here Flair is the best or something like that. And then Brett ends up repeating that, you know, the best there is, was, and ever will be. And he says that he doesn't care if Flair has an issue with that. And Flair says that he doesn't care if Brett says that he's better than any other wrestler. And he starts mentioning off like the NWA champs like Harley Race, the Funk Brother, and just all sorts of other NWA champions and stuff. But he says, but, or he, that he will not allow Brett to say it in front of him. And then Flair wants Brett to say that uh, he's better than Ric Flair and not just everybody. And Brett says, if you, he does the whole, if you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. And I've already done that. So if you have an issue with that, we can settle in the ring once again or something like that. Because Minch referencing or whatever, where Bret Hart, I guess, beat him in the WWF or something. I assume is when it was. And then Flair's like, you know what? I want to see you beat me again. And you have a long way to go before you get to my level and stuff. And then Mean Gene just gets in between him. He's like, we can discuss this in the back or something. And cuts off their conversation saying that, you know, they need to go to a break or something like that. And ends up ending that whole segment of them two just arguing back and forth. We then go to our main event for the night, which is Macho Man coming out with Elizabeth taking on Lex Luger. And so Michael Buffer does the whole big introduction and stuff for the match. And uh, as soon as Macho Man comes out, J.J. Dillon ends up coming out. And he gets on the mic and suspends referee Nick Patrick because Nick Patrick was the referee for the match. And he puts Randy Anderson in the match instead. And Eric Bischoff comes running out to like try and stop J.J. Dillon and stuff. And then J.J. starts to go walk to the back and Eric Bischoff's just chasing after him. But soon after, Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton end up coming out and they distract Lex Luger soon after Lex comes out. And so that distracts, like I said, Lex Luger over to the side and that allows Macho Man to come in from behind and knock Lex Luger out of the ring. And then so Macho Man's distracting the ref or whatever and Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton are beating up Lex Luger and stuff. And so they throw Luger in and the match starts and so Macho Man has the upper hand obviously with the help from the guys on the outside. Uh, at one point Macho Man starts to go for the elbow drop but Lex Luger gets up and catches Macho Man and like with a punch in the stomach and stuff and then from there luger starts to hit the clotheslines with the elbow or forearm whatever you want to call it and starts to prepare for the torture rack but macho man rolls to the outside so luger goes out after him and macho man starts to hide behind elizabeth which we saw uh mark marrow do the same thing with sable but he hides behind her and he ends up pushing her into lex luger and then it like kind of like i want to say like jumps over but she's still standing up so he just kind of like raises his arm up over her and hits luger attacking him um, so back inside the ring, Lex Luger ends up getting an inside cradle roll up on Macho Man off a move or something and gets the win off that. So Macho Man's yelling at the referee claiming that he did a fast count and everything. So they're trying to do the whole thing that Randy Anderson's now fast counting and stuff. And so Macho Man just starts beating up on Lex Luger on the outside and they go over and uh, push Dave Pinge out of the chair again and grab his chair and goes to attack Luger who's like laying or slaying or sitting whatever on the uh, steps coming up to the ring like from the entrance ramp and stuff and so he grabs the chair and goes over and gets ready to hit him but as he's doing it um, the chair gets pulled out from his hands and it's Eric Bischoff and Macho Man just turns around real quick and uh, attacks him I assume he thinks thought it was someone else you know just pulling the chair from him but he attacked him and knocked him out or whatever and clotheslined him and then he's kind of like staring at Bischoff and be like why'd you do that and stuff and Hulk Hogan comes running out and he shoves Macho Man away from Bischoff and then he's like you know we need to stop this whatever and Macho shoves Hulk Hogan back and as soon as he shoves Hogan back Macho Man gets hit from behind and knocked down or whatever and it pans over and it's Kevin Nash that did it so Kevin Nash 
knocked out Macho or hit Macho Man or whatever. And then Hogan from there, like after Kevin Nash hit Macho, he just starts walking up the aisle way back towards the back and stuff. And Hogan just staring at him the whole time as he's doing it and stuff. And Hogan uh, eventually got Macho Man back up and was calming Macho Man down from being attacked and stuff. And more NWO members come out and they start attack or surround the ring to attack Luger and stuff. Until Sting comes running out, slides in the ring between some of the NWO guys and stuff and is in the ring standing next to Luger and everything. And the NWO members start to enter the ring as the show fades to black and goes off for the night. So the show wasn't bad altogether. It wasn't a three hour show, which I was threatened that it was or would be. Um, so it wasn't, so that was a little bit better, but there's nothing like big or major of the show. We just had the, um, possible issues going through of the NWO, which this could be the beginning of the start of the, in, uh, the Wolfpack break off. I'm not exactly sure again on the NWO timeline stuff. Cause I'm not familiar with it, WCW stuff that much, but I like that whole stuff with NWO and like they're building up towards thunder and stuff on Thursday night. But like I said, unfortunately it's not on the network, so we can't watch it or anything. So this week for me, at least raw definitely got that brand cause it was a heck of a lot more entertaining and I enjoyed it a lot more. Um, so that's going to be it for the Monday night rewind this week. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know in either on social medias or in comments and stuff like that um don't forget you can listen to the podcast version through itunes or apple podcast whatever you call it and soundcloud under uh, monday night rewind or you can find it on youtube under the awesome nerd show my main channel and you can find the episodes there every weekend and it's just the podcast on a youtube video type thing so you can listen there and leave comments and subscribe and all that stuff to help us grow but i hope you enjoyed thank you all for watching sorry about the missing episode last week and hopefully this sounds good with the new microphone it's not the best quality but it's just what i could afford for now um but i hope you enjoyed everything thank you for listening and we'll see you next week